Hello guys, as requested in today's tutorial, I will show you how I created those two epic shots in Blender. And don't worry, it's gonna be easy. If you didn't watch the first part, I strongly advise you start with that. I will put the link of this video in the description. So let's start with this first shot. And for me, there are two main elements in this shot, this guy and the beautiful sky. For this human in suit, I just got it from mixamo.com. So you go in Mixamo.com and you create your account if it's not already the case. For your information, Mixamo is entirely free. So I did choose this guy, the alien soldier, but in my trailer it's a human with a suit. So you click on it and now you go in animations and I search for idol and I did choose this animation. If you want to apply the animation, you just have to click on it. So now you have the animation applied to your character. If you want the animation to be more intense, you can raise the overdrive here. But for my case, I just use the default values. Then you click on download, you select the FPS that suits your project. For me, it was 24 and you click on download. You will have an FBX file that we can easily import in Blender. Once you have the file, you can just store it in your hard drive. Now, let me show you how you can import this guy in Blender. So to import the character in Blender, just go in File and Import and you select FBX. You select your FBX file and you click Import FBX. And that's it, you will have your character in Blender with all those keyframes so it will be already animated. If you follow the previous part, you know exactly how I created those grounds and all those different mountains. I placed my guy on the mountain and the camera just behind it. And let me hide the animated fog for now. And here in this shot, you can see those different elements and they are coming from cargo. And here is the same building that I use in the animation. I just uh, scaled it down so it seems that it's very far. And for those two ships, it's exactly the same as we already did in first part. Those are just flying units and I just animated their position once again like we already did. Now for the camera, because I wanted a very blurry background, I did use a focal length of 70 uh, millimeter. The f-stop is 2.5 and the focus is right behind the back of the guy. I did add some shakiness to the camera movement because I wanted it to feel more organic and for that I did use the camera shakeify add-on. The link for this add-on will be in the description. It's a free add-on that I use in most of my projects. So to install it, as usual, you go in edit, preferences, add-ons, install, you search for the add-on and you activate the add-on. And this is, yes, camera shaker file here. And to use the add-on is very easy. You just click on this little plus button to add an effect to the, to the camera. I did choose the investigation, but I changed the influence to 0 0.13 because one was a little bit too much. If you could check that, you see, it's a little bit too much for my taste. So I did use 0 0.13. All right, so I think that's it for uh, this guy and the camera. Now concerning the lights, the HDRI, if we click on this render preview, here once again, the light is doing half of the job. This is really the, the key elements and this is why I found this shot epic. It's just because of this beautiful light. And for the light, I just use one HDRI, nothing else. So for the HDRI, as I told you in my previous video, I used the SynSkies HDRIs. And once again, I can't stress that enough, but those are really uh, the only HDRIs I use in all my projects. So this is a, a very good investment. I don't have any part in that, don't worry. But it's just my honest opinion. Those are the best uh, HDRIs out there for me. And yeah, I just used these HDRIs because I wanted to have the sun here. And I made uh, some rotation. And by the way, this plugin is coming with the HDRIs as well. But you can get it for free, the Scene Skies uh, plugin. I will put the link in the description for this plugin and for the HDRIs. And one more thing before we jumped in DaVinci Resolve, now you know that I always use those animated fog for my uh, project because I think it's a fantastic uh, value to your animations. And let me show you once again. So here you have this uh, plugin and you choose uh, iSteam. 
and here you will have a lot of different animated folks and what is great is that you just have to select one and click add insert and you have uh, those um, fog in images so it's not killing your render time it's very light to render and let me show you how it looks yes and here you can see the steam here and here just in front of the guy and we can see that in the render here around you can see that's uh, very cool for your renders so if you like the the result i think it's a great add-on that you can use in all your projects I will put the link in the description. Okay, this is how it looks in DaVinci Resolve after the render. And then what I did for the grading, in the first node, I just uh, raised the highlights for 1.1. And for the second node, as usual, I used the film convert. So if you check the result before and after, so this is before all the grading and this is after the grading. The grain and the grading itself is really uh, adding a lot to the shot and gives it a cinematic look. And for this lens flare, I did use a, a little bit of fusion. So let me show you that. And this is my nodes for uh, this lens flare. Okay, so from the image, I just tracked the, the sun here. So you just track the sun. And then I added the lens flare effect. After you finish your tracking for this lens flare, you just have to connect it to the tracking. So you click on the lens flare and here, so right click, connect to tracker one path and position. And just like that, your, your lens flare will follow the tracking you've done. And I just added a glow effect okay, to 0 0.04. And that's it for, for the node of uh, this shot. I'm not sure really if you're interested in those nodes apart, but this is a composition part that uh, you can see is adding a lot to the to the shot. So if you're really interested about those uh, stage of composition in Da DaVinci Resolve, just tell me. So we'll make a video for that. And yeah, that's it uh, for this uh, shot. Let's check the second shots just after this quick shout out. Hello everyone and welcome to the ride, my Blender car animation course created for beginners and intermediate users who want to get into car animation. I'm so proud to present this project. It's more than 64 videos and 11 hours of training and today I can finally share it with you. In this course you are going to cover all the topics you need to master in order to create your own 3D projects such as environment design, lighting, animation, camera animation, camera framing for TikTok, Instagram or YouTube short, smoke simulation, <laughs> DaVinci Resolve, sound effects and the list goes on. I will also provide all the necessary assets that you need to follow along. My updated city pack with skyscrapers, city props and 22 new buildings that you can use in all your animations. HDRI magic to create realistic animations in a few clicks. You will also get this C63 AMG, this OD RS5, this Corvette C8 and this beautiful Mustang. Yes, everything is included in this course. Now uh, let's check the uh, monster shot and I did exactly the same thing. In Mixamo, I go in characters and I select a mutant. This is the guy I use. And same, you go in animation. This time I think I use a breath. And yeah, mutant breathing idol. Yeah, something like that. Because uh, he was moving a little bit too much, I think I lowered the overdrive to zero. Yes, I think I did that. I did use zero for the overdrive. So you just click on download and download. And let me show you what I did in Blender. So to import the mutant, you do as usual, file, import FBX, and you import your animation. As you can imagine for this shot, I just place the camera in front of the mutant. For the lights, I just use one area light, this one. And I think I went for something like 100. I did change the Y scaling of the, the length because I wanted it to be a little bit narrow like this. The light is nearly hitting the, the back of the mutant. It's not hitting the, the face because I didn't want that much light on the face, right? And one more thing to sell the effect. You come here in wall properties and you lower the strength of the overall light to zero. So it's very really dark, okay? Now it's a little bit maybe too much. So for the area light, Let's lower it to 50, yes, yeah, something like that. Now to give a more organic feel to the mutant, you just click on it and let's go in shading. I will go in the render preview and here you lower the roughness. 
So you have this wet feeling on the mutant. And I think it's uh, it's very good to give the, the organic feel to the guy. Yeah, something like that. Now for the eyes, what you can do is you click on the mutant, you press tab to go in the edit mode, you select the eye and you press control and plus to select the eye completely and you press uh, shift on your keyboard and you select the other eye and control plus again. So you have the two eyes selected, you press P on your keyboard and separate by selection. Now you can press tab to go back in layout. So you have now um, the body and you also have the eyes. And for the eyes, you go in shading. So you want a different material for the eyes. So you click on this little two here. So you will have a specific material for the eyes. And in emission, I just changed the emission color to red. So you raise this. And here I went for a red. And I changed the strength for something like 20. Okay, just to have those glowing eyes. And because the camera is not pointing directly on the bulbs, that's okay. Okay, you can just be like that, like in my animation. And that's it. This is the, the secret of this shot. Let's go now in a DaVinci Resolve. Let me remove the fading so we can see the animation completely. So you see how easy it was to do this, uh, this shot. And there are some lags. It's because in the color grading, I did a lot of uh, denoising in DaVinci Resolve. That's why we have those uh, little lags. And I did that because I had a flickering issue with uh, the eyes. So if you have the same issue uh, than me, you can use my settings to, uh, to, uh, to remove the flickering for the eyes. For the grading, I did exactly the same. I raised the highlight to 1.4 and maybe the contrast as well. And for the second node, as usual, I use the film convert. So this is the result before and then after. And I think the grading is bringing a lot on the table for this shot as well. Okay, guys, that's it for those two shots. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. I talk to you soon. Bye-bye.